If you are in the market for a family car that offers a bit more space and practicality than the hatchback, and maybe has a raised driving height, kind of like an SUV, but you don't want any of the costs associated with an SUV, chances are you're looking at one of these, a Nissan Qashqai. Now, it's impossible to drive down a British street without coming across a Qashqai, and that is with good reason. They are very popular cars. So today, we're gonna to look into everything you need to know about a used Nissan Qashqai. When the Qashqai was first launched in 2007, despite its dour looks, it was a groundbreaking car, essentially creating a whole new segment just for itself, that of the family crossover. Now, somewhat unsurprisingly, this was a popular mix. Low running costs, practicality, raised riding height. Families loved them. The second generation, by the time it came around in 2014, had a lot to live up to. And also other manufacturers, they were starting to cotton on to what Nissan were doing and bringing out popular crossovers of their own. Nissan's response in this second gen was to make some pretty decent changes, to be honest. The styling is much improved. It's a lot sharper than the first gen. The interior quality is much improved and you get a lot more tech on board as well. All of which helped to ensure that this second generation Qashqai was just as popular as the first gen. It ran from 2014 to 2021. That's quite a long period for one generation of vehicles. So it means there's quite a lot of engine choices and trim levels to, to kind of pick from, which can make things a little bit confusing. So we'll delve into the basics of that now. This generation was in production for quite some time, so there are plenty of engine choices. The early models had either a 1.5 or 1.6 litre diesel to choose from, and the 1.6 was the option if you wanted four wheel drive. There were also two petrol engines that you could choose from, a 1.2 litre and a 1.6 litre. Post facelift cars from 2018 onwards had two variations of the 1.3 litre petrol engine which we have here today. The 1.5 litre diesel was carried over and a 1.7 litre diesel was also introduced in 2019. If you're doing lots of motorway miles then the 1.5 litre diesel is more than up to the job and if you're after a petrol the less powerful variant of the newer 1.3 litre is also more than sufficient. For the majority of its run, the Mark III Qashqai had five main trim levels to consider. The bottom rung is Vizia. These are not well specced. You will not see a lot of them about on the second-hand market. Middle of the pack is a centre trim, and it really does have everything you need. There's cruise control, DAB radio, Bluetooth, alloy wheels, climate control, fog lights, folding door mirrors, a centre premium, also offered Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. If you're after tech, go for N Connector because that offers high beam assist, traffic sign recognition, and a 360 degree parking camera, as well as sports seat and rear privacy glass. Techna is where you start to feel some real kind of luxury with 19 inch alloys, a Bose sound system, and heated seats. Techna Plus tops it all off with Napa leather, panoramic glass roof, and electric seats. In 2020, the trim levels were reduced down, thankfully, to Accenta, N Connector, and N Motion. And N Motion replaced Techna and is the car we have here today. While this may be the top spec N Motion Qashqai, it's worth remembering that this car ultimately is a family workhorse. Don't expect lots of premium materials everywhere. This car is made to stand up to family life. So there are some kind of hard plastics dotted around the place. And it's worth checking to make sure that everything's in working condition. There's no big scratches or gouges um, around the cabin. It's also worth having a look at the tech. So obviously this is a well-specced model. So we want to make sure that, that tech works. Do the heated seats work? Do the climate controls work? Is Apple CarPlay working? In terms of being in the cabin, I will say the seats are very, very comfortable. Nissan makes a big thing of the ergonomically designed seats and they are very comfy. I can imagine myself being okay in here for long journeys. The cabin's also very bright and airy with this panoramic sunroof. Um, and as we mentioned, this is a kind of raised driving position. So you've got a good view over the road. You're nice and comfortable. You can see around and I can imagine sticking the kids on board and heading off somewhere in comfort in this car. In terms of the rear of the Qashqai, it's a bit of a continuation from the front, to be honest. So there's the same thing again, where you've got some of those scratchy hardware and plastics, but the seats are very, very comfortable. Although I imagine most people are gonna be making use of the Isofix points to put child seats in the back. In light of that, the doors of the Qashqai open nice and wide. So it's actually 
really easy to get a car seat in and out because it can be quite bulky and awkward things. And also having that raised driving position also helps getting the Isofix seat in and out of the back. The panoramic sunroof makes a big impact in the rear in terms of opening it up and making it light and airy. But there is a downside to a pan roof, which you'll find in every car, not just the Qashqai, which is that it eats into headspace. So I am just over six foot one. And for me, if I were to sit up straight, my head's gonna to be touching the roof. So I personally wouldn't be able to have a lot of time back here on long journeys in the Qashqai. But for most people, that's not gonna be a problem. And it's a very kind of comfortable place to be. And this rear bench is actually surprisingly comfy and offers you quite a nice view over the top of the seats in front of you, which is always good in terms of things like car sickness, being able to see around you for the kids. And the windows are a nice height as well, so you think the kids would be able to see out quite easily. Now the Qashqai's boot capacity does vary ever so slightly across trim levels. Whichever trim you're looking at, you're getting over 400 litres of space. It's a very usable space, there's a nice wide opening. When you remove the false floor, You've got some extra capacity down there. And the one thing to bear in mind, that as this is a slightly higher car, obviously you're lifting items slightly higher than you would do in a regular hatchback, and you've got quite a big load lip here. But conversely, for me, actually having a raised height makes things easier to get them out. I'm not bending down so much. In terms of driving the Nissan Qashqai, well, first of all, driving position, I'm just over six foot one, and I am more than comfortable enough in this car, actually. There's good adjustability in both the seat and the rake and reach of the steering wheel so I've got myself in a position that I am quite comfortable in and I could stay like this for some time. These seats in this M motion version really are very comfortable. The steering is very very light so it's really kind of geared towards maneuverability around town so you think parking in a multi-story car park, nipping out of a space when you're doing the school run that's what the steering is set up for it's not set up to be responsive when you're chucking this car down a country lane because that's not what you're going to be doing if that's what you want don't look at this car look at something else but if you want something that's not hard work to drive easy to maneuver you've got good vision all around you you've got a raised driving height so once again, that helps with you placing the car and it also helps me personally for comfort. And when you're on a motorway, it helps kind of getting that vision further down the road as you can see over some of the other cars in front of you. And I think that I could be comfortable on a long journey in this car. We've got a flat bottom steering wheel and the steering wheel is actually a good size. You've got some nice large dials in front of you, which I like, I like having a big speedo. I like being able to see what speed I'm doing without kind of staring at a little screen. The infotainment system isn't the most modern one you're going to encounter, um, but if you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you're probably not going to use it anyway. But what you do have is some really handy, easy to use buttons for the climate control. They're not buried away in a menu anywhere. They're right there in front of you. They're very big and easy to use. When you're on the move, you cannot hear the engine in this car at all. There, there's no engine noise. Um, when you get up to speed, obviously you'll get a bit of wind noise and a bit of tire noise, but it's actually, at low speeds, as we're doing right now, it's actually a really quiet place to be. So all in all, I would say that the driving experience of this car just kind of matches up to the rest of the car as a whole, which is that it's just a bit of an all-rounder. It's easy to drive, it's relatively comfortable and quiet on the go. It's easy to position, good visibility, but it's not gonna blow your socks off in terms of performance, because that is not what it's for. There you have it, everything you need to know about the Nissan Qashqai, a family crossover that ticks off just about every box on the family car wish list. It's practical, it's cheap to buy and run, whether you get the petrol or the diesel engines, you're looking at claimed MPG figures anywhere between high 40s up to mid 70s, and even to in terms of insurance groups, Insurance tends to start around group 13 and goes up to group 21. It's also comfortable, comfortable to be in and comfortable on the road, because this car ultimately was developed on UK roads, so it can handle our potholes pretty well, as long as you don't opt for those big alloys. If you've watched this video and you decided, actually, the cash kite isn't for you, there are some good alternatives out there. There's cars like the Hyundai Tucson and Kia Sportage, both of which offer very extensive, considerable warranties. Or you could also consider the Renault Kadjar, which is basically the same car underneath, but with some Gallic flair on top. 
Thanks for watching this used Nissan Qashqai everything you need to know video. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you'll be notified every time we upload a video like this.